everyone, my name is Dr Jackie Bowden and I'm going to talk today about some of the insights that we've gained through research on parenting teenagers and the topic of alcohol and also talk about some common beliefs and why they're actually myths. So firstly, I'm Deputy Director of the Health Policy Centre at the South Australian Health and Medical Research Institute in Adelaide, this amazing building here. Samri is actually home to more than 700 medical researchers and we're tackling the biggest health issues in society today. So today, just to give you an overview, I'm going to talk about adolescent drinking and should we be concerned? Drinking in Australia and where does it occur? Parental drinking patterns and beliefs about drinking in front of children. Parental rule setting about alcohol and then finally give you some key takeaway messages. So the harms of adolescent drinking. Well, Australians are actually among the highest consumers of alcohol in the world. Adult, adult patterns of consumption are predominantly set in adolescence and 33% of 17 year olds and 25% of 16 year olds are actually regular drinkers. The good news is though that drinking rates are actually declining, but unfortunately emergency presentations are increasing. So we're seeing more and more young people presenting at our emergency clinics uh, for help with alcohol. Early initiation of alcohol, so earlier in life, unfortunately leads to risky alcohol use. And this is unfortunately the leading cause of death in 15 to 24 year olds. So we think of alcohol being this benign um, substance that we all use, but we need to stop and realise that it is the leading cause of death in 15 to 24 year olds. Early initiation also leads to mental health and neurocognitive problems in adulthood because the pathways for memory, learning, judgment and impulse control are all being set in adolescence and can be damaged because of alcohol consumption. And there's more and more evidence coming to light about this and the guidelines are going to become stricter over time. Also, early initiation can lead to alcohol dependence in adulthood. So we want to set our kids up for a positive future. So where do Australians tend to drink alcohol? Well, national surveys show that uh, we've actually had a societal shift in the last few decades. And now with our health and safety laws and drink driving laws working, a lot of the drinking is now actually happening in people's homes. And this has actually been increasing over time. So people still drink in other people's houses at parties, restaurants, cafes and things. Uh, but it's more and more so happening in the home. And of late, um, more and more is the case with COVID-19 pandemic. So I'll give you a bit of background on parental drinking patterns. Currently, Australia has two main guidelines for alcohol consumption. These are going to change soon, but the first one shown here is to reduce your risk of injury, drink no more than four standard drinks on any occasion. The good news is that parents in the yellow bar there, you can see, are less likely to exceed this guideline than people who aren't parents. The other guideline is to drink no more than two standard drinks on any one day to reduce the longer term risk of things like cancer and heart disease. Again, you can see the yellow bar here, which is parents. They're less likely to exceed this guideline generally than people who aren't parents. Does parental consumption differ by age of the child? Well, we looked at fathers and we found that in terms of the guideline for lifetime risk, there was no difference by age of the child in the home. So men are um, more likely to continue drinking regularly on a daily basis, regardless of the, the age of the child in the home. But they're less likely to exceed the four plus drinks on a day um, if their child was aged between zero and two. So in the very early stages of the child age. When we look at mothers, they were actually less likely to exceed the lifetime risk guideline if the child was aged zero to two, which is what we'd expect because of the time of breastfeeding and caring for an infant. When kids are aged between six and 11, and we believe that's when kids are going to school, maybe mums are going back to the workforce and have less time in their diet days to be consuming alcohol. Also though, interestingly, when the child was aged 15 years and over, and we've got a theory about that, that um, maybe this is when um, kids are going out to parties and things, and mums are having to go and pick up their kids from parties, but we need to test that. 
And similarly, um, less likely to exceed the short-term risk if the child was aged zero to two or 15 and over. In terms of place of consumption, parents are more likely to drink in their own home or at friends' houses than non-parents, and that's to be expected. I know it's, you know it's much easier to go around to a friend's house than it is to organise a babysitter and go out to um, drink at bars and parties. Parents were just as likely as other people to drink at restaurants. Um, when we ask people about why they might cut back their consumption at restaurants, it's not because they're drinking in front of kids, it's because they're concerned about um, being drunk and, and not being able to drive home. So how much alcohol is consumed in front of kids? Fathers are more likely to drink in front of children than mothers. So in terms of drinking a glass of alcohol in front of children at least weekly, around 32% uh, of mums will drink a glass, whereas around 45% of dads will on at least a weekly basis. Uh, drinking more though than that on a weekly basis to the point where you get talkative and lively, around 16% of mums compared to 26% of dads. Getting visibly drunk doesn't occur much, but still 6% of mums on a weekly basis are getting drunk in front of their kids and 12% of dads. So that is really concerning and something we need to think about in terms of just the care for children as well as the, um, the role modelling that that um, and the influence of role modelling. So are Australians concerned about drinking in front of kids? Well, we asked Australians. There's little concern about parents drinking in front of children, uh, less concern about fathers drinking in front of kids than mums. So we've got some societal norms in place there where mums are less able to be drunk, drinking in front of um, dads or it's less condoned. But there is much more concern about parents getting drunk in front of children, as we'd expect, and similar concern about both mums and dads getting drunk. In terms of our beliefs about alcohol use in front of small children, most people, most Australians think it's okay to have one or two drinks, but 77% think a person shouldn't get drunk. However, most people think that alcohol is still being drunk at gatherings where children are present. And that's something we need to be thinking about too in terms of role modelling. Uh, and most people so 57% of people agree with the fact that most people don't think about the fact that they're role models. So parental roles, rule setting about alcohol, and does it work? The short answer is yes. And when we released these findings to the public, we got a huge amount of media attention about this, and a lot of parents calling in to talk back to tell us how pleased they were with this, because it gives um, parents hope that their kids are actually still listening to them. So this is a little bit of a tricky one, but adolescents who believe that their parent or guardian would not approve of them drinking are less likely to drink alcohol. So if they think that their parents won't approve of them drinking, they're less likely to drink. And four times less likely to drink if they're 12 to 13, 1.8 times less likely to drink um, if they're age 14 to 15, and 2.8 four times um, more likely not to drink if they're aged 16 to 17. So that's really positive news. When we ask parents about their beliefs, around 25% think that if they set strict guidelines um, about their adolescent not drinking, well, they won't listen to them. Well, we've actually shown that that's not the case and kids do listen and it makes them stop and think about drinking. 26% believe that giving their adolescent the occasional drink at home will help them stay safe. Unfortunately, evidence shows now that this is not the case and that kids that drink more at home are actually more likely to drink outside of the home setting as well. 30% uh, believe that giving their adolescent the occasional drink at home will help them to learn to drink responsibly. We know that um, now evidence is quite clear if they're drinking in the home, they're also drinking outside of the home, drinking more heavily on both occasions. So we've busted those myths. So what are the key takeaways of this research for parents? Well, limiting availability of alcohol is really important. Parental supply is still very high in Australia, but it's associated with heavier drinking in kids. So they're getting it in the home and they're also drinking it outside of the home. 
Even giving sips is associated with more drinking, unfortunately. As much as we'd like to think that it's a good thing to do, it's evidence is showing it's not. Uh, set clear rules and expectations, including that you disapprove of your children drinking. And talk about upcoming parties, discuss your expectations with your kids and also with the other parents, that the fact that you don't condone drinking at the party. Uh, unfortunately, we as Australians need to start thinking more about our own drinking and to be a good role model. As kids who live in families where parents drink regularly are more likely to be heavier drinkers and also more likely to start earlier. And that then flows on to problems, as I mentioned earlier, in adulthood. So thank you very much for listening today. I'd like to thank the co-authors and contributors. Also, NHMRC and Sam Marie for funding and data and the Commonwealth Government. Thanks very much for your time. Hello and welcome to the second part of the Positive Choices Facebook event on parenting teens and alcohol. My name is Dr. Smriti Nepal and I'm going to be the moderator for this session. This session follow, follows on from yesterday's session by Dr. Jack, Jackie Bowden on parental rule setting and role modeling. We have with us today Associate Professor Kath Chapman and Associate Professor Tim Slade from the Matilda Center for Mental Health for Research in Mental Health and Substance Use based at the University of Sydney. And they will be talking to us about adolescent substance use, its trend, and parental supply of alcohol. Without further delay, I will get to the first question. The first question is to Tim. Tim, can you tell us what the research suggests about the trend in adolescent alcohol use and how it has changed since the parents of teenagers were teenagers themselves? So our most reliable source of information about trends in adolescent alcohol use come from a series of large scale surveys um, carried out in the general population. The most recent of one uh, of which was carried out last year um, in about 22,000 Australians. And the result of that survey showed that around three quarters of all adolescents, and here we're talking about 14 to 17 year olds, report that they um, have not drunk alcohol at all. So when we asked this sort of, sort of similar um, questions to adolescents back in 2001, say 20 years ago, we saw that only one third of all adolescents report that they had not um, drunk alcohol. So there's really a clear and substantial increase over time in the proportion of adolescents reporting that they had not drunk alcohol at all. If we think about risky drinking, which we um, define as four or more drinks in one occasion, um, this has also reduced quite substantially over time amongst adolescents. Um, this pattern is not common, we should say, but um, the results of the survey demonstrate that 8% or about 1 in 12 um, adolescents drink at risky levels at least once a month. Uh, but back in 2001, this figure was around 30%. So again, a, a dramatic um, decrease over time. Mm -hmm. So, um, Kath, could you tell us what this means for parents? One of the things it means is that for our generation, um, the experiences that we had with alcohol as teenagers are likely to be really different to those of our kids. So, although our instincts as parents are often to, you know, to frame things in terms of what we did at their age and say, well, we were all drinking and we were fine, this may not be helpful for us as parents or for them as teenagers. Um, so I think the data are really pretty striking and some of the changes are pretty recent. So I think the data suggests that even if we have older teens who've been through high school, their experiences may be different to kids who are starting high school today. And the other thing is that although Tim showed us Australian data, we know that we're seeing these um, same patterns in many countries around the world, which I think is really interesting. So I think it's really important for us as parents to, to understand some of these changes and to relay messages around drinking norms to our teenagers. You know, many teenagers are choosing not to drink. They're starting to drink later. They're drinking in less harmful ways. You know, and this might challenge not just our own ideas, but some of their own ideas, some of the ideas that our kids have, because um, it might be different to what they hear at school or what they see on social media, where they may not get the full picture about what everyone is doing on the weekend. 
you know, we, we know from some of our other research in this area that many young people overestimate the number of their peers who are drinking or who are drinking to get drunk. And we try to correct uh, these norms for young people in, in our prevention program. So I think as parents, we can play a role too in challenging these perceptions and, and reinforcing some of these messages around drinking norms. Um, you know, we can let our teenagers know that they're actually doing a better job than many of, of us did when we were young. And, and that's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to teenagers and parents, um, there is, uh, I, I find that there's a misconception that parents might think that giving sips of alcohol to their teens or even, you know, allowing their teenagers to drink during family occasions might help them to drink responsibly. Um, Tim, Tim, could you tell us, does the data support this? Is this helpful or beneficial at all? Well, we've known for a while that parents are really the major source of supply of alcohol to teenagers before they reach the, the legal age of purchase. And many parents see parental supply as a safe and controlled way of introducing alcohol to their children, often with the ultimate aim of reducing kind of risky um, drinking behaviours later on in adolescence. But it, up until recently, we, we don't really have much evidence to, to sort of support or refute this idea. So for this reason, my colleagues and I, a number of years ago, started a research study where we recruited a sample of just under 2,000 uh, 12-year-olds and their parents with the aim of following them up with yearly surveys to track the type and amount of supply of alcohol um, from different sources, including but not necessarily limited to parents. And we also um, asked about the kids' drinking trajectories as they progressed through adolescence. Um, and importantly, we asked about and collected data on a wide range of factors that might account for um, or, or confound the relationship between parental supply and adolescent drinking. And, you know, this research has now been going on for 10 years with some really interesting findings, I think. So firstly, there's a strong and consistent um, finding from this study that parental supply of alcohol to teenagers prior to the legal age of purchase is associated with an increased risk of alcohol use, an increased risk of binge drinking and also alcohol-related harms, things like getting into fights while drinking in, in later adolescence. Um, parents often think that if they um, provide alcohol to their teenage son and daughter to go to a party and then they, the parent, at least have control over how much alcohol is consumed and that their child won't necessarily um, obtain alcohol from other sources. But the research that we carried out really demonstrates that parental supply is also strongly associated with an increased risk of supply from other sources, like from friends or other siblings. So there's a bit of a cascading um, kind of relationship there. And lastly, we also found that the risk of harmful drinking patterns later in adolescence seems to increase with earlier initiation of supply. So in other words, for each year earlier that initiation of parental supply of alcohol begins, there's an approximately 10% increase in the risk of binge drinking at age 18. So this really suggests that you know, early adolescence is a particularly uh, vulnerable period for the provision of alcohol to adolescents in terms of their later you know, drinking behaviours, drinking harms. And really, together, these findings provide at least, at least to me, very strong evidence that parental supply definitely does not decrease the risk of later harmful drinking, might, might in fact increase it. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Um, my next question, Kath, again related to this, is considering what Tim has told us, um, what do you think parents need to consider about supplying alcohol to their teenagers? Um, especially at family occasions or, you know, just providing them with a few sips. Mm. This is a really interesting study. It's really, it's really um, I think as a researcher and a parent of teenagers, this is one study I pay really close attention to whenever they publish new data. And um, I, I was working in this area when Tim and his colleagues started this study and I confess that I thought I knew what the answer was going to be um, and I was wrong. <laughs> So I, I come from a European background and I thought this Mediterranean model of drinking might be a good thing. And I did spend a fair bit of time reading the first paper and saying, did they control for this? Did they look at this? Did they measure this? 
Um, but as Tim said, that controlled for a whole range of potentially confounding factors. And, you know, the science behind this study is, is, um, is, is it's beautiful science. Um, so for me, again, it, it reinforces the need to frame our understanding and our behaviours as parents in terms of the evidence. So not just what happened for us when we were young or what we might have observed anecdotally, um, because the evidence, particularly on parental supply of alcohol, is, is really compelling. Um, you know, there's, there's no evidence that providing alcohol um, to kids or teenagers, whether it's a sip or a taste or a six pack to take to a party, is protective against harmful drinking. So even though Tim talked a little bit about that kind of dose response effect, the message for us really as parents is that it, trying to teach our, our teenagers about alcohol in this way as a protective strategy may not be the best one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So choosing not to give alcohol to our teenagers to take with them when they go out, not supplying alcohol at gatherings or parties is something that we as parents um, should be doing and is likely to be a much more successful strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think there are so many things that are out of our control as parents and um, it's one of the hardest things about parenting a teenager is they become more independent, which we absolutely know they should be doing and want them to be doing but it can leave us feeling more and more like we're background noise or that we don't have a say in what they're doing. But I think this is one um, kind of clear modifiable risk factor that we can support as a parent. Um, and again, given what, um, what we've just been talking about um, in terms of the fact that many young people are making some really positive choices around their alcohol use, then you know, this is perhaps one opportunity for us to support them in that as parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, just before we end, I was wondering if, both of you could give our audience a take home message uh, from this session. What do you want them to remember uh, from this session today? Tim, can you go first? I think what um, one of my take home messages is that alcohol use is changing amongst young people. I mean, quite rapidly, really, um, which means as parents, we might need to make some changes to the way in which we parent our teenagers when it comes to drinking. I mean, the good news is that young people are starting to drink at a later age and drinking less, and we as parents can really support this. Mm -hmm. And Kath? I guess uh, one of the things I'd also just like to, to comment on as we've been talking about this, one of the things that I often get, um, get asked about is, uh, about whether parents should ensure that they don't drink alcohol in front of their children or how can we kind of, you know, how can we reinforce these good strategies and these helpful strategies for parents if we drink alcohol ourselves? And I guess I just also wanted to quickly to comment on that and to say that um, if a choice to drink alcohol, not to drink alcohol when kids are present is something that, that some parents are happy to do, which is fantastic, but it may not be something that all of us um, want to do as parents. Um, and sometimes as parents, we, you know, we do feel if we drink alcohol ourselves and it's really tricky, tricky to model positive behaviours with alcohol or have conversations with our kids or our, our teenagers about alcohol. Um, but I think we can be mindful not just of how much we drink in front of our kids, um, but how we talk about alcohol, why we drink it and, and what it says to our kids or our teenagers and about the role it plays. Um, so, you know, if we finish a day of work and we feel like a drink, then we could choose to do something else to cope with stress or to unwind and relax. You know, we can say to our kids, I had a really full on day, I was about to pour myself a glass of wine, but I'm gonna take the dog for a walk instead. Um, you know, we can make some other choices at, at family occasions. We can have some family occasions where um, that don't involve alcohol or we're not over, everyone is drinking or where we choose to drink less. So, you know, I think being aware of the role that alcohol plays in our lives and being open about that with our kids is, is important as well. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of a take home message, I guess um, what I'd say is that even though sometimes it feels like getting our teenagers to leave their bedrooms is beyond the sphere of influence of parents, we can and we do play um, a strong role in our kids' decisions around alcohol. Mm -hmm. and. I think letting them know that if they're choosing not to drink, they're in the, in the majority, not supplying them with alcohol and, you know, doing our best to be a good role model in terms of our own relationship with alcohol, really good um, places to start. Thank you. That's great. I'm sure our audience found that very helpful, especially coming from parents of uh, teenagers yourselves. Um, thank you again, Tim and Kath. And I would like to thank our audience for listening in and watching this session today. And also, if you haven't already watched our first session by Dr. Jackie Bowden, I encourage you to go and watch it. You find it on our Facebook page here. And if you want more information on adolescent drinking, 
uh, or you know on adolescents and any other drugs then please head to the positive choices website to get more information as well as to find some good prevention strategies thank you again mm -hmm.